Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea. Welcome back to another Hearthstone Cast video. Today we'll be having a look at a best of three play between Solar and Sol. Solar, the Korean player, I think, is he still playing for Team Kaizi? I'm not quite sure if he still is. All I know is that he's here on the top right side of the map and he's playing as the Red Zerg. In the bottom left, the player formerly known as Sol, and in this game still named Sol. It's uh, of course now called Spirit. Legendary name change out of uh, the Polish Terran player. Can only change his in-game name. Of course, we still know him as Piotr Walukiewicz. One of the greatest Polish players that has ever lived. Uh, probably the greatest Polish Terran that has ever lived, that's for sure. In order to get uh, get another Polish Terran in mind that performed at his level, I guess we'd have to go back to Tarson in the early wings of the Liberty days. I'd expect most of you not to know about Tarson, but uh, truly a legend of the game. Known for his ability as well to uh, drink bottles of uh, alcohol at a very high pace. Very impressive, or at least impressed me when I was a young boy. I remember thinking one day I'll be as good as Tarson. I never quite became as good uh, at Tarson at drinking, uh, consuming alcohol, but I think I did decent for myself when it came to playing StarCraft 2. Now, Solar, op so Solar Sol opens up with a uh, non scout here. She so stays at home. And Solar opens up with a uh, spawning pool first. There's a little bit of a mismatch here, so it's going to be in a bit of trouble. Four links is uh, the weapon of choice here for the Korean Zerg player. And Sol will be, well, hopefully will be staying home or scouting around with his Reaper. If he straight away moves across the map with his uh, jetpack boy, he's going to be in a bit of trouble. At least I can only assume he's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Sol, not at all aware of these four links, the big threat that they pose to his natural base. Two more links are on the way here for Solar as well, and this Reaper will spot the lack of a hatchery and say, hey, wait, wait, wait. he's actually gonna go in. Okay, that is extremely surprising to me because may maybe he just wants to get some more information. This Marine will need to be microed properly here. So, uh, this actually did not that much. Didn't do that much at all. This Reaper is uh, in, in, in in hot weather right now. It's in a difficult spot. We'll be able to get out of this uh, main base and stay alive for now. I'm surprised he didn't decide to go back home. These two Marines are hunting for four links. This is like hunting for a pack of lions and all you have is a paper sword. I think four links could have just turned around and fought these marines. I'm surprised that Solar didn't. He was waiting for his metabolic boost. Now Sol needs to be very careful because all the depots are down. Uh, what is Solar gonna do? Solar can't cancel this anymore. That's It's too late for that. He also will not be able to catch any of these marines unless Sol isn't quick enough. Okay, yeah, this SEV is gonna go down, but the marines stay alive. This, could, this was potentially dangerous. I think Solar wanted to hit the moment that barracks lifted as, as well. So I think this is a very well timed out strategy. Sol, however, was paying close attention. Keep just uh, randomly interchanging Sol and Spirit. Uh, I'm gonna try to stick to Spirit from now on. That is his new name, probably the name he would want to be called. Solar is taking a third base here as Spirit is moving into a, uh, what is this, double Hellion. So it's a two base Hellion Banshee opener here for Spirit, followed up by a tech lab on the barracks. I think the Reaper just died slightly out of our vision. Observing hasn't been too great today. My apologies for that. So the third depot is about to finish up here for Spirit and he will start sending a Banshee across the map soon as well. Pneumatized Carapace is going to spot everything that uh, Spirit has up his sleeve and Solar will be able to, uh, to finally get the information that he requires to get a good response going. Four links extra on the way as well. Creep threat is not looking super great, but also not too poor. There's four queens out already, fifth queen on the way. And I think Solar is going to be pretty happy with everything he's seen so far. And he's going to be in, uh, in firm control of this game here, unless uh, our Polish Terran manages to do something with these cars. Not quite the case yet. Four cars so far, zero kills. We'll see if that uh, changes any time in the future as once again decides to push up this ramp. We will not be able to find any real damage. Overlord will be sent back in to see if there's perhaps an armory or an extra barracks going down or whatever it is that Terrans uh, want to be doing these days. Solar sees the complete lack of extra barracks and probably is pretty happy with himself surprised he didn't go behind the mineral line to spot for a potential armory but maybe he just doesn't care 
Now, Lair is halfway done as well. And once Lair and an Overseer start, I think this uh, Banshee party is going to come to a, a pretty abrupt ending. As the, the Overseer with the Pneumatized Carapace will just be able to chase these Banshees around and see them at all times. Even now, this Overlord is doing a pretty decent job at just chasing these Banshees. Once they get cloaked, of course, it gets more difficult. And that's where the Overseer comes in. Overseer gets constructed immediately here in the natural, very neutral position. As these two Banshees have cloaked up. I wonder if uh, Solar is aware of it. Let's take a look at the, the first person here for Solar. Checks the main base. Overseer will be sent into the main as well. As uh, these queens are now just chilling uh, in his third base. Solar not noticing yet that he's losing workers in his main. We are seeing it. But he's also dealing with a bunch of cars at his third base. These cars are dishing out a lot of damage. As there's no more links really remaining. Now new links come in. 14 drones have gone down and both of these banshees are falling as well, I believe. Yep, both the banshees and all the cars have gone down. This gives Solar uh, a free pass to drone up to whatever he wants, but his fort base is relatively late. So really all he can do is add another 10 workers here. And he, after that, he's just going to get oversaturated. He's on five gases right now and is playing double Evo. Five gases, what does that indicate? I don't, I'm not actually aware of five gas stuff unless it's into a hydralisk then very quickly. So if you're on four gas, you can basically afford infinite bane links while playing pure link bane and, and getting a high base count, high drone count. Ooh, okay. Potential bane link drops? Oh yes, we have four links being sent over to be uh, morphed into a, in, into a bane link, the chosen ones. They will be going in a, going in for a, a suicide mission here. So they'll turn into Banelings, drop from the skies. Um, if they'll ever get that far, oh my god. Solar's instincts of moving that Overlord away. Of course, that's not instinct, but he just wanted to move that Overlord there anyway. It's just really cool to see how close he was to getting caught by these Marines. Sol not checking the edges. Potential run by a danger is always there, but he didn't care too much. Now these Overlord, uh, this Overlord should start moving in. I'm surprised Solar hasn't sent it in yet. I love Baneling drops, by the way, because Terrans are not, not used to paying attention to the minimap too much because they tend to be the one in control. They tend to be the one that does the damage. Whenever you can force a Terran to look at the minimap, and to continuously pay attention to the minimap, that's a good thing. Let's take a look at the response time here out of Sol. He's dropping right now into the main base, and I don't think there's going to be a response towards the drop in the natural. As the SCVs go down, he looks back and says, hey, I lost nine workers, that's not very good. Now he's going to be worried for the rest of the game. Solar already way ahead in supply as well, and still has a bunch of money in the bank too. Still only on five gases, and... Now we're going to be taking a 6 gas even. He's already floating 900 gas. And I don't see any structure to really start spending that gas. So that's a little bit surprising. This Liberator will be able to deal some damage. We're going into the first person here of Solar for a second. As we see how he responds to all of these threats at the same time. Liberator at the fort base is being dealt with very patiently. The drops get pushed out of the main base and 2-2 two, two starts immediately. No infestation pit on the way yet. There we go. And still no structure here to get rid of that infinite gas that he has. Which is why I'm so surprised he took that 6 so quickly. Queens will be uh, biting the dust here. Three queens go down. Good snipes out of soul. Medifex will stay alive and Solar will go back to creeping. Building drones. And hopefully uh, setting up a 5th base. I don't like this location for a 5th but... I guess we'll have to do. I don't like any of the locations of fifths on this map for the Zerg players. Spirit starts moving out onto the map right now. Has a couple of tanks in his army. Of course, much rather would have mines to, uh, to help him out. But that's not the case here. Solar, after that single Overlord drop, hasn't been able to really get any damage done so far. Now we see a big run by. There's still a decent amount of Banelings at home as well. All of these SCVs are just going to straight up die. I can feel it. I can smell it. And I think Sol can too. So instead of really managing that situation at home, he just... Oh my god. These guys looked uh, death in the eyes and they escaped. Holy crap. Imagine just seeing 10 Banelings and 35 Zerglings run by as they ignore you to deal with... Uh, what was it? Seven Marines that were attacking your fifth base. I bet these SCVs were rather glad that these marines dropped uh, right at that time. And as these tanks are uh, shelling away at the creep so far, but the supply for Spirit is just a little bit too low. And I think he's going to need to pick up here. We'll lose all of his tanks, uh, bar one, which is the one that is positioned at home and is actually semi-blocking the reinforcements here, I think. 
Uh, we also have a drop going into the main base. Couple of spores there. Perhaps with good target fire, we'll be able to take out one of these medevacs. No. Spirit decides to turn around, and the Polish Terran will be able to take out the fifth base, which will uh, deny a little bit of mining out of solar, but also isn't quite the end of the world. A fourth base isn't even here yet for uh, the Polish Terran. I hadn't really noticed, but this was way more all in than I thought it really was. I thought this was just your your regular push. It didn't look super strong, honestly. So I'm surprised that. Well, the, what was it actually? Was it a seven racks or an eight racks? It was just a five racks with a with a single factory. He's still only on 52 workers right now. He's once again producing these SCVs. Can you see this on the high ground? Oh yes, you can. Especially if they start attacking you. Plus two finally finishing up for the Terran player as well. Solar once again is completely in position and in complete control of this game too. As we're fighting on a rather small map, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point, and that some point will come soon once this fourth base will start flying over, most likely to this area, Solar will push in and try to take out a base, force a complete counterattack, or maybe even go for a straight up attack into a third base here, even though I would not recommend that with how choked up everything is. Fifth and sixth being taken simultaneously here for the Korean Zerg, who is uh, continuously spreading creep, doing a good job controlling the pace of the game. And uh, it's just in an overall pretty dominant position. 89 workers right now have finished up. Vipers are about to pop out. Adrenal glands, seismic spines, the range upgrade for the Hydras, and plus one on range all together while being maxed. And this is an absolutely massive run by adrenal isn't done yet but i don't think it's going to matter the sheer numbers are simply too large here as a lot of these marines are going to take a fall uh, a couple of these links are going to get taken out this actually was a very good trade here for her for spirit who also is dropping two locations at the same time and at least one of these bases is going to fall i believe it's going to be the bottom right base there's a bunch of tanks and random liberators sprawl around the map 169 supply against one one 198 and the question now is can spirit actually finish the game here and uh, if he doesn't how bad is it it's gonna take the right side base it's gonna work as a nice launching point for all of his attacks uh, i kind of like that we have another double drop coming out needs to be so careful oh my god he's on sieging with absolutely everything at the same time that is so dangerous liberators and tanks moving si moving simultaneously solar will allow it for now uh, Spirit has a massive army and uh, two abducts are being cast on the Liberators. Tanks are shooting though. Uh, supply is still in favor of Solar who still has a pretty big bank as well. These double drops not being in the fight might look good if you hit before the fight happens. But at this point the fight is already over and now they're about to hit. At the same time Solar is pushing forward and I think this might just be it. As the fourth base lands and finally starts mining here for Spirit... Uh, Solar just moves and kills every single worker at the third base and might even feel ballsy enough to continue pushing on into the natural with pure Ling, three Hydras for backup, but more moral support than anything as they're taking out the depots at this point. The Lynx absolutely wreaking havoc on every single building, every single unit that they see. Adrenal glands done, 2-2 uh, upgrades as well, plus 3 hasn't finished yet for Spirit. And I think this might just be it for game number one here. A couple of Lurkers being morphed in as well and... I, this is just absolutely over. 62 supply against 1, 67, 81 workers against 21. And the upgrade game is looking hella strong for Solar. Still has a decent amount of creep on the map as well. Once again, retaking that bottom uh, right side base. And that, uh, well, is this a 1 o'clock? Semi-12 o'clock? Oh, sorry, an 11 o'clock. 11.30 o'clock, something like that. Now we have a flank, and this is just links, but there's just not enough Marines to deal with this. GG gets called, and Solar wins game number one in his best of three. Game number two will be played here on Oxide between Soul and, uh, sorry, Spirit and Solar. I'm going to mess it up 12 more times this series. It's even more confusing because his name still says Soul here, so... It absolutely messes with my head. This is why no one should be allowed to name change. Just use the same name as your parents gave to you. I'd be Kevin. Spirit would be Piotr. Solar would be Minsu. Would make things a lot easier rather than having to remind all these names and then their real names as well and then their name changes. It used to be absolute hell with special as well. Obviously it used to be called Major. I think at a time where he was called Princess. 
um, you have several Pokemon as a name as well. Then Pokemon YouTubers as nicknames. Uh, or the nicknames that Pokemon YouTubers used. Men's Meat. Shofu. He was called... God, what was the other one? He had one that... Uh, I completely blank on the name right now. Uh, Special, or the player previously known as Major, and I think has over 12 nicknames uh, throughout the years. But the biggest name change, of course, was the Special, and that's the one he stuck with. So we see a pool going down here for Solar. This time it doesn't start before the hatchery. And once again, we're not seeing a scout out of Spirit, who is completely okay with uh, not having any information. Kind of wild, honestly. That is kind of wild. Especially because it seems like the only two things that uh, Spirit does is either no scout Reaper or he plays um, or plays two racks. <laughs> and both of these things kind of get countered against by, by, by pool first. So I don't know. I don't actually know. Seems odd. Seems very, very odd. Reaper's gonna be moving forward get a little bit of damage done hopefully here for the Polish Terran player so we think of Oxide it's an interesting map once again a line base here out of Solar by the way a lot of the foreign Zergs much prefer taking the forward one uh, to ease the creep spread around this area which can be really difficult imagine taking this as your fourth base perhaps a tank push on top of this little area if you don't have a whole lot of creep there yet could be tricky however if you take this as your fourth then the tank push will be coming from downstairs if there even will be a tank push now of course you then also have this area uh, that like a high ground tank up here to worry about so there's advantages and disadvantages and solar decides to take the line base rather than the forward base also makes defending initial hellion harass a little bit easier i believe if i recall correctly Ooh, okay this is a cool build this is a double car uh, two racks into uh mad effect drop this is a Clem Classic. Clem loves this build, okay? Clem's been playing this build for a very long time. Whenever we hit Romanticide, you know you're gonna get this build order. Romanticide, he plays the two car into two barracks. On Oxide, he plays uh, six to eight cars into two Banshees, all with triple CCS. Uh, I've watched so many Clem games at this point. I can dream his openers. Uh, it just seems very difficult for Zerk to uh, puncture a hole into his tight defense. Uh, Pyotr, or uh, Spirit, is a little bit weaker than Clem still at the moment. But of course, uh, should be able to uh, properly execute these build orders as well. Third CC has finished up and uh, Solar has scouted everything at this point. Saying to himself, okay, I know what this is. I see the barracks over there. I know you're not going to be building any more cars. I'm going to be absolutely fine with building eight maybe even 10 links. Um, perhaps a run by is a possibility. Like whenever these cars are on the map, if you can get a ooh, Roach Warren. So this is this is one of the things that is very common on this map is uh, a 1-1 one -one Roach push. As Zergs find this map very good for Terran, so they'd like to finish it rapidly rather than uh, staying in the game for too long and eventually dying in a semi-split map scenario. There's so little bases on this map that once Terran gets his fifth base up, very often the Zerg can't do much anymore. And these first five bases aren't that hard. You could say, well, why doesn't the Zerg just take the base of the Terran? It's because it's so far away from the actual Zerg bases that this, this map naturally just produces split map scenarios. And thus, we often see very high pressure coming out of Zerg players um, feeling the need to finish this game rapidly. We're gonna see two racks into tanks. No third barracks coming down. We don't have any eBays either. At least not before... Wait, what? Okay, now we're gonna see a barracks over here. No eBays yet. It's gonna continue tank production. Build a reactor with this, I can only imagine. I've never seen this build before. This is completely new to me. And I'm surprised we're not seeing a barracks go down immediately as the money is there already. We are having constant unit production, which is good. Double eBay has priority over the third racks. Okay, I don't know this build order. I have not seen this build order before. Or at least this variation on the build order. Reaper joins in on the fun as well. Can we get a grenade? No, we can't get a, get a grenade. This is going to be a pickup as both cars go down. Continuous tank production of... 
There's no extra barracks yet. His production is going to freaking suck. These two Medifacts are looking to do some damage. And Medifact uh, 3 and 4 are going to be delayed forever at this point. This will, however, massively increase uh, Spirit's tank count. Which is a big deal as well, because he is playing against a 1-1 Roach all-in. And I say all-in, I don't mean necessarily that this needs to kill the opponent, but it does need to do significant damage. If you don't dish out a fair amount of damage, you don't take out a, a base, at least force the lift and kill 12, 13 workers, you're going to be in trouble. Ideally, you're resetting tank counts as well when you're playing this. We see a fort base going down, but this is just as a backup. This is for the follow-up in case you don't completely kill, because the goal is always going to be to kill. Why did he build a reactor and then not use it with any of his barracks? He's only going up to four barracks at this point as well. Combat shield has finished up, 1-1 is on the way, armory should be coming soon as well. Bunker being created at the third base location and Spirit's actually going to be going for an attack but I think he's completely misreading the situation here, not aware of the complete lack of a fourth base and he's he's the one being all in and now he's going to start pushing. He goes here, he's like, hey, wait a second, there's nothing here. Should I actually be pushing here? The answer is an obvious no. The answer is go home. Um, except that's not exactly what we see our Polish Terran doing here. Now he's going to see all of these Ravagers and probably say to himself, well, that, that ain't good. Uh, we'll be able to actually get out of here. This is a very good evacuation, but he did lose a fair amount of units at home. We now have barracks 3, 4 and 5 finishing up. Two more bunkers are on the way here. What is What, what tank number is this? Tank number 4 is about to pop out as well. Bunkers are being occupied. Oh, these tanks are not quite in position. And I think with a couple of good biles, Solar might be able to do it. We'll go for the bunkers first though. And now these tanks will be able to dish out a lot of damage. 11 workers going down so far. A lot of these marines are running low as well. Medifex are keeping them alive. One of the tanks is going to fall. A second tank here is going to fall as well. And I think Spirit might just be absolutely dead here. As uh, Solar's just moving forward. And Spirit does scout the fort base. And what does he say to himself here? Probably says to himself, well, this sucks. GG gets called. Solar wins uh, game number two here uh, in this best of three. And that means that Solar wins the series. And uh, I'm going to thank you all for watching. Thanks so much for watching uh, this video. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to hit the like button. And we'll see you all next time for a new video. Ciao, ciao.